Hello everyone, David here. Are you tired of Netflix's insanely aggressive profiteering? Would you actually like to own the media you buy? Me too! In this video, I'm going to go over how to back up your DVDs and Blu-rays, re-encode them as high quality, small-ish files, and then set up a streaming service that you can host locally to watch them in your house or anywhere in the world. Okay, let's go. Just a quick note before we start, ripping DVDs and Blu-rays is a bit of a legal grey area depending on where you live. This guide is intended for personal backups of media you already own. Now, I have to say, I love the convenience of Netflix. Just being able to get to the latest episode of my show with a few clicks on the remote is amazing. But they keep putting up the price, and now even some of the paid tiers have adverts. And have you seen what happens when you pause a show? I find it, frankly, disgusting from a customer's point of view. So I'm getting back into physical media. No one can take these away from me after I stop paying them monthly, but I would like the convenience of the digital and streaming approach. So let's talk about how to have your cake and eat it via a stream too. You will need some free software to achieve all this, and hardware-wise, you will need a decent PC with some disk space for your media and a disk reader that you can access from the computer. I got this Matt Sheeta Blu-ray reader and writer a few years ago. You can get one like it for less than £50 on Amazon, and this might be your only expense. Uh, this one requires two USB-A connections for power, uh, and sadly doesn't read BDXL discs, the highest capacity ones, and many 4K UHD discs use this format. So you might want to spend a bit more and get a compatible drive like this one from Verbatim. This was closer to £100, but it is very good. Only requires one USB-A connection, has faster read speed, making ripping take less time, and is compatible with every Blu-ray format that currently exists anyway. The hardware in this venture might be your only expense, so if you're really taking this seriously, it's worth spending a bit on a decent drive. First of all, download a program called Make MKV. This will rip the movie or TV series from the discs and save them into MKV files. This part is totally lossless. It's basically taking the streams of video, audio, and metadata, like subtitles, and putting them in a digital container, the MKV format, which is super versatile, on your hard drive. It can be a lengthy process, especially if you're encoding all seven seasons of Star Trek TNG, like I did. Oh, and a quick word about UHD discs. You may not be able to read these right off the bat. With my verbatim branded drive, which is actually a rebranded LG model, I had to reflash the firmware, to an older version in fact, before I could rip the disc using what's called LibreDrive mode. This is a method that bypasses the usual copy protection by accessing the disc more directly, and it's essential for ripping 4K UHD titles. Naturally, I was a bit nervous about flashing a brand new £100 bit of kit, and you should be too. It will void the warranty, and there's always a small chance of bricking the drive if something goes wrong. So please only do this at your own risk, and follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the Make MKV forums very carefully. Don't rush it. Make MKV has a free 30-day trial, and this might be enough to encode everything you're doing, but actually it's technically still in beta, and they publish a free beta key on their website every month. So if you don't want to pay, you can keep using it that way. If you do want to support the devs, the permanent license is about £55 in the UK. A bit pricey, but probably worth it if you're going to be doing this a lot. Put the disc in the drive and fire up Make MKV. Click on the disc icon to open it, select a directory to save it to, and select the titles you want to save. This will be multiple titles in the case of a TV series, or just the one, probably the longest one, in the case of a movie. Of course, if you want to save some of the special features, like a making of documentary, select those as well and we'll rip everything together. Click Make MKV and it will start copying to your hard drive. Give it a bit of time to finish. Once it's done, you'll have at least one large MKV file sitting on your disk. You could, in theory, stream this if you want a lossless backup, but you probably want to re-encode it to save space. Download and install Handbrake. This is the software we'll use to re-encode our MKVs into some other format. Click on Open Source and go and find your file, or files if there are multiple. Now you want to set it up. I recommend you start with a preset like Fast 1080p30 and then modify it to suit your needs. In my case, I've selected the AV1 codec for video, which is a very efficient way to compress it, although it does take time to encode. 
You can do it using NVENC, i.e. graphics card accelerated, but be careful as this does result in higher file sizes. NVENC is much faster, but less efficient in terms of compression. SVT AV1 is slower because it uses your CPU, but it usually compresses more efficiently than GPU-based encoders like NVENC, meaning smaller files at the same quality. To keep the quality still high, but lower the file size to closer to 1 gigabyte for a 45-minute episode, I raised, or lowered, depending how you look at it, the constant quality to 26. Just so you know, a lower number here means better image quality and larger files. I also increased the encoder preset to 4, which spends more CPU time making a more efficient file. I selected AV1 and didn't bother with 10-bit because this box set is not HDR. If it was, 10-bit would be appropriate. I actually use MKV as the output format for this stage as well, as it handles multiple audio and subtitle tracks well. You could use MP4 if you wanted compatibility with some other software later. Once you've got the settings you'd like to use, I recommend you save a new preset, and then pick the audio and subtitle behavior you want. I usually tend to keep other audio tracks and all the subtitles, as they don't take up much space, depending on your codec and settings of course, and it's nice to choose how to watch them later. When you're ready, hit encode and go and put the kettle on. Again, it will take a bit of time to encode, but of course, if you have a lot of disks to get through, you can always start ripping the next disk while the MKVs from this one are encoding. They won't interfere with each other. Now I want to introduce you to Rename My TV Series. You probably have a bunch of files called something like Show Name T00, and this isn't much use if you want to organize them. And here's why it matters. Most media servers like Jellyfin rely on file names to figure out what show and episode number something is. So download this program, open it, and search for your show. It will almost certainly find it, and then you can drag and drop your MKV files into the program. Open them up to make sure you know which episode is which, and then double click on the list on the left hand side to queue up the right names. Make sure none of them are still open, and then hit rename. You will now have at least one nicely named encoded backup of your movie or show. This is how you can build up a collection, but we were going to set up our own streaming service, weren't we? This is where it gets really cool. I recommend you get Jellyfin. It's an open source media server that gives you a front end that looks a lot like Netflix. Download and install the server, and then point it at the folders where you put your encoded files. Make sure you set up a user, and now you're ready to watch. From a device on the same network, this can be a laptop, phone, tablet, or even your smart TV, install the Jellyfin client and search for servers. Your computer should appear and then you should be able to play your media. It will download the cover art and metadata for the show and remember what you last watched so you can resume midway on any other device. And it looks good. If you used a decent source like Blu-ray or DVD and encoded with a decent quality in Handbrake, chances are the picture is better than if you were using Netflix or Amazon, who prefer to keep their bit rates and therefore costs low if they can. I'm very happy to know I've got every episode of Star Trek TNG encoded at great quality and ready to go whenever I get the urge to revisit my formative teenage years. If you're using an LG TV like my C1, there is a Jellyfin app available right in the LG content store. Just install it, log in, and you're good to go. If you can't find the Jellyfin server for some reason, you might need to put in your computer's name in order to find it. Find the tray icon on your PC and open Jellyfin to browse its settings again. If it still doesn't show up, you will have to delve into your router's settings and double check the firewall on your PC. Make sure you've given Jellyfin access to local computers on your network. Okay, so you've got Jellyfin running on your home network. That's part one. But what if you want to watch your shows from a hotel or on your commute? There are two main ways to do this, a not very secure way and a significantly more secure way. The first not as secure way is something I admit I've recommended before, forwarding ports from your router. This is a fairly easy and quick way of getting access to a computer on your local network from the internet. And you can see the setup steps here if you're curious. But now there's a better way to do it, using tail scale. And honestly, I actually think it's easier than port forwarding. Nowadays, most people are comfortable installing apps and signing in, but logging into your router and figuring out IP addresses, port numbers and firewall settings, not so much. Tailscale is a completely free app for personal use, and it lets you set up your own mesh VPN, so all the devices you set up to use it can speak to each other no matter where they are in the world, securely.
It's as simple as going to the Tailscale website, setting up an account, and running Tailscale on the same computer as the one running Jellyfin. Then install the Tailscale app on the devices you want to access it, like your phone or tablet, and then access Jellyfin as if it were on the same local network, even when it isn't. When you're out and about, you might need to use the Tailnet address to access your home servers instead. This can easily be found in the app, and you can copy it to the clipboard and paste it into, say, the Jellyfin app if you need. And then you can just leave it, because that address will work when you're back home on your LAN as well. It's a truly superior setup, and I actually recommend you delete all of your port forwarding rules and use this for all your devices, even on your Raspberry Pi and for game streaming as well. Since it's a mesh VPN, it tries to create a direct connection between the devices and only falls back to a relay server if it absolutely has to. So latency is usually great. It's a low lag solution for moonlight streaming too. I always felt a bit nervous having my services exposed essentially to the whole internet, but this means only those with a secure login on my Tailscale network, or Tailnet, can see my services. So to recap, RIP with Make MKV, Shrink with Handbrake, Rename with Rename My TV Series, Stream with Jellyfin, and Share Securely with Tailscale. So now you've got that set up, you should be able to back up all your media keep it on a hard drive on your PC pretty efficiently, and serve it to other devices around your house. It's like having your own personal Netflix without any monthly subscription fees or pesky ads. If you go down this route as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments, so please leave them down below and I'll have a read. And if Tailscale is new to you, I'd like to know how you think it compares to using port forwarding, or perhaps a slightly trickier reverse proxy setup. For me, it's a no-brainer mix of easy setup and security, but perhaps you need to host a server publicly and have different requirements. Let me know. Well, I hope this video was educational or at least entertaining in some way. See you next time. Thank you.